Ooh, welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. 2012. Dodge Charger. All right, what's going on with this thing? From the complaint I heard, yes, I can see the check engine light is on. And traction control light on. Oh, tire light on. 220,000 miles, and it has a misfire. Now I can feel the misfire. Oh, it's missing bad too, guys. This is uh, quiet as it is. I want to assume. Let me give it some gas. Yes, <laughs> that's a V6. Not a Hemi, guys. So I got a misfire on a high mileage Dodge Charger, 200,000 miles uh, at item. Uh, I don't know. First thing we do is scan it. I'm sure I'm going to see uh, P0302, 4 or 6, likely on bank 2. Just comment. But uh, instead of guessing, we're going to go in and find out. Guys, this is a hashtag short video. Y'all stay tuned for the full video. All right, hashtag short. Ooh, righty, guys. Here we are. Man, I got a car running. Uh, basically, actually, I can hear a tick. Y'all hear the ticking noise? Small little ticking noise. Now, remember, guys, this car is two, over 200,000 miles. Uh, yes, I can see... Y'all see that brand new uh, off of the adapter housing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look down there, guys. Brand new O2 sensors. I'm assuming on both banks. Yeah, he put brand new O2 sensors on it. All right, now, here's the question. Are those O2 sensors causing these codes? I guess I can go ask him was these codes there before he installed the O2 sensor. Guys, remember those are those are aftermarket O2 sensors. They I can look at them and tell they're not OEM. So yes, and there's a chance O2 sensors can cause problems. Aftermarket O2 sensors. No, 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 no. I'm a big fan of not use only using OEM O2 sensors, cam sensor, crank sensor. I'm gonna do a video on my top. Uh-uh guys. That's not good. But again, I don't know if he put those on thinking those would fix the codes. I don't know if the codes were there. I would say this. If those codes showed up after he installed those O2 sensors, then yes, those, we gotta go in with OEM O2 sensors. But now my whole focus have changed, guys, because I'm hearing this tick. All right, this is a VVT engine, guys. Uh, very dependent on oil pressure, the proper oil pressure, okay? The way, the mechanical way to check the oil pressure is you have to install a gauge right here. I don't have that too. I uh, I do, however, I am aware of what would cause low oil pressure. Okay, things like uh, oil gallery plug loose, wrong oil filter, um, little things like that. But you technically should verify oil pressure is on point. So because I'm hearing a tick, I'm suspecting there's some valve train issues, guys. Um, now, misfire in cylinder four. Cylinder four is on bank two. Bank two is over here, under here. All right, so I'm gonna have to remove this plenum. I'm gonna go back and ask uh, for some teardown. I'm gonna have to remove this plenum. I'm gonna do a compression test, and I'm gonna remove the valve covers to see if any of the rock arms have collapsed. That is one of the main problems with this engine. Okay, uh, rock arms collapse and they cause problems. And with the valve covers off, I can check and make sure I'm not losing oil pressure at the oil gallery plugs at the same time so i in essence have to go further guys i need to go further uh the preliminary stuff is not getting it okay yeah right, multiple yeah. cylinder misfire in fact let's go see which cylinders are misfiring let's go over to obd monitor okay here's the misfire counter whoa misfire counter okay i'm seeing a misfire cylinder four uh-oh five Four and five, cross banks, guys. Oh, wow. So, yes, we most definitely need to go and find out how it's compression. All right, I'm getting a, got a misfire in cylinder four and a misfire in cylinder five. Yeah, this thing's missing bad, guys. Uh, could that be uh, plug, core? <laughs> Absolutely. But he have he's replaced the plugs and the core. My understanding. So it's I mean it's time for a compression test at this point. Alright guys, here we are back. Um guys, I just did a compression test on bank one. Okay. Now, granted, guys, this is not the proper way to do this. You should do them all so you have something to compare it with. 
All right, but anyway, on cylinders one, three, and five, I got roughly the same amount, 125, 130 PSI, which is typically normal. Now, I went ahead on and proceeded with the compression test, even though, guys, let me show y'all something. Now, y'all know I told y'all earlier, these are brand new cars a customer just replaced. And funny thing is, this coil right here, the only one that hung on there when I pulled it out. You know, I didn't, I don't just disconnect the connector. I pulled them out. This coil hung on to the connector as if that's a good connection. Now, I want to show y'all something. Here's the other two coils. This coil right here uh, just fell off from the connector as if it was not connected all the way. And guys, look at here. It's not okay the tab the tab is broken all right so i got this pushed all the way on and look all right so a little vibration can cause that to slightly come off and cause those misfires that we were seeing now the, what the computer picked up was cylinder five which is this one it's the exact same way guys this connector is not staying securely uh securely attached to the core because the freaking tabs are broke. Look, I'm all the way on here. Look at that, it would not click. I can't blame that on these cheap coils. These are not William coils, but it doesn't matter. The tab inside the connector is not uh, connecting. I don't know if the guy that did the tune up knew he's supposed to press down on this. A lot of people not sure about these connectors, guys. I wanna do a video on how to properly remove connectors but there's so many on these Chrysler products. But yeah, this is not staying on there. And after, uh, after a while of driving, look at that. It can easily come off. Now I had a misfire, what was it? Four and five. I can almost guarantee you cylinder four is the same way, but I will not know until I move, remove this. So after doing a compression test, I'm convinced there's nothing internal. There's no internal problem. Okay, at least the compression test reveal that those cylinders are able to share their load of work, which is very important, guys. Because remember, if compression off, this don't matter, this don't matter, the new core plugs don't matter, nothing matters if compression is low. All right, that's why I recommend doing a compression test first. Right. Uh, yeah, it could be something simple as freaking, this is, not, this is important. I'm saying simple, look, that's not even guts inside of here. Let me see something. Yeah, y'all see that, the whole, the whole clip that holds, that attaches to the coil is just outright missing. Yeah, it has to connect to this tab. So if there's no insides on this connector, how's that gonna happen? All right, so we face with another dilemma. And let me see if I can, uh, let me remove my compression stuff and put everything back to normal, see what happens, guys, stay tuned. All right, guys, I have the engine running. I got my coils back in, it's running. And as you can see, I don't see or feel a misfire. I mean, it's because the engine hasn't vibrated enough. And on top of that, the motor mounts wild. So anytime you rev up on it, look, this is on here good right now. But any little vibration, look at look how simple that is. Look at that. Y'all see that? There go my misfire. That is not going to stay on there on its own. Now, if you <laughs> a DIYer and you're trying to save money, I mean, just tie strap something around here and grab this to make it stay in place. But just pushing it in, which is how it came in the shop like that, that's not going to work, guys. My point is, guys, this is not going to work. I can't leave that. Customer shouldn't leave that. If he did his own plug, then he rigged, uh, Jimmy rigged his connector up. That's all on him. But we're going to either have to find a way to keep these on, or like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna need an injector wiring harness. All right, injector wiring harness would come with the coil attachment and everything. All right, that's all I have, man. Uh, I hope y'all got something out of this. I don't know, but... I try my best to make sure you get something out of the video. As you can see, this is was this wasn't a good look by the customer himself. That's all I have, man. Thanks for watching.